Well, we're gonna try to prove them wrong tonight because we got, we got something pretty, I think it'd be pretty neat to try anyway. Um, I was looking at the hymns this week and you know, I kind of rotate around between hymns that are familiar, hymns that we can almost sing without words and that kind of thing. But when I saw the history of this hymn, I thought, man, I've got to, I've got to share this. Uh, from a website called Hymn Charts by, by a man by the name of Taylor Brantley, whom I've never heard of, uh, I found this information on this song, uh, Nothing But the Blood of Jesus. It was a Christian meeting ground called Ocean Grove in the summer of 1876. It was in that summer that one of the greatest hymnists traveled there with a Bible in his hand and a new hymn in his heart. Ocean Grove was born July 31st of 1869. A group of Methodist ministers were looking for a spot to escape the summer heat and study the Word of God. They found a well-shaded, well-drained piece of land on the seashore of New Jersey. Twenty tents were pitched, and the ministers enjoyed their campsite so much, they decided to make it a permanent meeting site in years to come. Not only for themselves, but for other Christians too. No time was wasted, and by the next summer, the piece of land was being transformed completely into a small town. Over the 1870s, the new campsite grew rapidly in popularity, especially boomed in 1877, listen at this, when 710,000 train tickets were sold for the Ocean Grove Asbury Park train station. Now you might say, well, what caused the boom in attendance that year? Well, it was no coincidence that that was the year directly after Robert Lowry introduced nothing but the blood to the summer visitors of Ocean Grove in 1876, causing a revival within the camp and word to spread far beyond. Robert Lowry was a well-known preacher in the 19th century and took notice of the booming popularity of Ocean Grove and Lowry famous wanted to be no, famously rather wanted to be known for his sermons rather than his hymns. He loved music but thought it to be of lower importance than putting a sermon together and delivering it and I agree with him there. Nevertheless, Lowry came up with a new hymn for the occasion. He thought it would be a nice ad on the main event of the preaching. He was not prepared for the impact of that add-on, as the story goes, would have in Ocean Grove that year. What, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hey, I want to tell you this too. It, the song wasn't without its detractors because I don't know if you know this, but there are a lot of people that think when you sing songs about the blood, you're part of some slaughterhouse religion or something ridiculous such as that. So his song didn't make it into a lot of hymnals immediately. But this song there, in that place, in that year, at Ocean Grove, uh, rang out from every corner that summer. Another famous composer, uh, Ira Asanke, was in attendance that year and claimed Lowry's hymn immediately took possession of the people. Perhaps Lowry would be amazed at his legacy. He put such emphasis on his sermons Yet hymns written in his space time are what have lived on so strongly through the ages. It was no different in that summer, way back in 1876. For it was not only Lowry's sermons that spread like fire through the little town, but the simple little hymn that he introduced to the people. So tonight, I'll do my best to, to play it. Now you folks in the house, I gave you some lyrics that I don't think Brother Paul got them. Oh, you did get them. Praise the Lord. What I thought we'd do is let's do a sing-along tonight. You want to do that? In the old days when you did a sing-along, it wasn't like leading a congregational. You'd go to somebody's house or something. We're in God's house tonight, right? And somebody would play the piano and everybody just gather around the piano and sing. Now somebody would say, well, I can't sing. Doesn't matter. You'd sing anyway. As a uh, former pastor of ours, Jerry Atkins said, you sing by letter. He just opened up and let her go. 
And he also said this, if he can't sing, whistle. <laughs> so if you want to whistle, that's fine. But you'll notice you folks in the house now, online, I think Miss Terry's putting up a page out of the hymnal. So you folks online, sing along too, okay? You can sing every bit of it. What we're going to try to do, now I might miss a note in the process because it's all I can do to play the melody, as you well know. So if I mess up, keep singing, okay? But I'll sing the part that's in parentheses and you sing the parts that's not in the parentheses. So it'll be like, what can wash away my sin? And you sing, nothing but the blood. And by the way, you got the easy part because just about every line you sing, nothing but the blood of Jesus. So if I mess up, just keep going, okay? Doing two things at once is not something most of us men can do. But it goes something like this. What can wash away my sin? What can make me whole again? Oh, precious is the flow. White as My pardon, this I see. For my cleansing, this my plea. Oh, precious is the flow. I gotta move my nothing can force in a tongue. God of good that I have known. Oh, precious is the flow. No other found I know. Lost my page three. Here we go. This is all my hope and peace. This is all my righteousness. You'll notice there's a verse there that you've never heard. You see that one there at the bottom of page three? That was a part of the original hymn. And the words are beautiful. And I thought, well, we've got to include this, even though probably none of us have ever sung this verse. So let's let's try that one. Now by the now by this all over. Now by this I'll reach my home Oh, precious is the flow No Now you can go home and tell folks you've been a part of a sing-along. See, we just get together and 